Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the Political Brown Kid here, back again to discuss nothing other than dating and relationships. The only thing I want to talk about with this video is a red flag that I've been noticing, or at least it just has with me, um, in the dating world, when you're in your late 30s, early 40s, and older, running into a lot of women's profiles then again i'm speaking from from a male's perspective so it's not as though i'm coming down on women so i don't want it to be taken that way um because i know that women have a lot of complaints as well and i was just talking to a woman today who i met just going to be casually as a friend um and hearing the horror stories that she's encountering um, and specifically, I guess it's really the more jumping directly from guys. Uh, what, what's turning her off is guys jumping directly into the sexual conversations with her, you know, as, as soon as meeting her and on first contact. And, you know, I had a kind of a perspective on that um, that I gave to her. And, you know, my perspective was kind of this. I think that some guys do that. Some guys are probably just creepy. It's just creepy to, for them to do that. That's just where their mindset is. That's what they're about. But I think for some guys, too, maybe they kind of venture into that realm um, slightly, dip your toe in a pool, not, not be overly graphic or crass, but maybe kind of just bringing up the subject of sex because they're not trying to get friend zone. So if you probably see a guy do it subtly, maybe he, he had an approach before where he was Mr. Nice Guy and it just didn't work out for him. He got either ghosted or, um, you know, maybe he got put into the friend zone. So maybe he's just trying a different approach because trust me, it's happened to me as well. I haven't taken the crass route as of yet. Probably will never do so. Probably will, I can't say. But um, I think that that's why some guys do it. But I also just think that some guys are just being crass. But the thing that kind of brings a red flag to me just from the male perspective when I'm online dealing with females, it's running into females that are in their, you know, 40s. And these are nice females. Don't get it wrong. These are nice females. But some of them have never been married. A lot of them have actually. I would say probably 80% of the women that I've made contact with, that that I've been able to get to the next level with, meaning, you know, um, they've liked me, I've liked them, and it was like enough where we both were able to have conversations on the phone and, and talk and get to know one another. The eighty percent, I probably only ran into one person who was re, who who was previously married, but most of the women they have they've never been married. They and some of them never had kids. I would probably say about twenty percent have never had kids, so they've never had kids and never been married. And then the, the other eighty percent of those women have. They've, they have kids, but they've never been married. And so kind of with me, with the red flag, it's just kind of, well, you've gotten to be 40 something years of age. And now, you know, in your profile, it's I'm dating with a purpose. I'm dating for the ring. I'm dating for the ring. And for us older individuals who have probably come out of a marriage and you're just kind of like, well, you know, Marriage is possibly on the horizon, you know, maybe down the road. But right now I'm looking possibly for a life partner and possibly marriage. But it's like now all of a sudden it's just it's all or nothing from a woman that is in her mid to late 40s or even early 40s, early to late 40s. And now it's, you know, I'm and, and you know, you don't have kids or you've never had kids or even those women that do have kids. And now it's kind of like with the next man that I meet, I have to marry him. One woman that I met, she's never had kids, um, never been married. And, you know, we, she and I was talking. And so I was kind of like curious because I was kind of, I kind of had a feeling of why these women are doing this. So I kind of dug and asked some questions. And I think I got the answer, at least from this one woman. I can't speak for the others. But. From her, she started saying, I said, well, you know, why marry, you know, why why not just have a life partner, you know, and go through life with that person, knowing that, you know, you and that person love each other, your life partners. Why do you need, you know, the government to make it official? Why do you need to go have that stamp of approval? Because when you get married, it's really you're just getting married through the government. It's really a contract and that's being recognized by the government. And then your ceremony with the church is just, you know, it's the spiritual ceremony. 
But I'm just kind of like, well, why do you need to go and have it officially being married? And, you know, she was just kind of like, well, you know, if, if something ha were to happen to you, you know, what would happen to me with the house? And what would, it was it was more about the material, like everything that she started bringing up was really about the material stuff. She started basically saying, well, what, you know, if something, if you were to go into the hospital, you know, what, what, what would happen with the house? And, you know, how would I be protected? And I was just kind of like, well, you can easily put things in place, legal documentation in place to protect one another from those type of things from happening. And that's the same. That's why I'm just kind of baffled in a way to some with some instances with, you know, the legalization of, you know, what the LGBTQ um, community pushing for marriage. And I'm not trying to say that they should or should not get married. I'm just trying to say that, you know, there are plenty of ways to get around, you know, w with legal documentation to solidify oneself with particular financial or material assets. So she just kept pushing that. So my thought immediately went to, okay, here's, here it is. She's mid forties. She was mid forties, never been married, no kids. And now it's like you're looking for a partner to go through life, but you want that protection of having to gather their assets. Whereas when you're dealing with people who are older, who probably have kids, they're looking to say, okay, well, the assets that I've obtained over my life right now, they're going to go to my children. So, you know, I'm not trying to pass anything on to you because you should already have your own, you know, and maybe things that we build after, you know, once we get together, maybe those things, yeah, we'll talk about those and kind of figure out where those assets are going to go. But, you know, really like my life savings is going to my kids. And so that's kind of like the, the the one red flag that's just been popping up that I've been just kind of dealing with. It's just, you know, the, the the drastic push for older women to, you know, be adamant about getting a ring. And, and, and I get dating with a purpose. If your purpose is just to have a life partner, that's fine. But if you're dating, like your purpose is I got to have that ring. It has to be, you know, um, you know, it has to be a marriage. Then my thing is why, you know, what's the alter what's the ulterior motive behind that? And I think a lot of it is for the security. They're doing it for the security. And I, like I said too, I've met a lot of professional women too who they have they've been single. They were they've never been married, but they've had kids. Or they had um, one kid, and one woman is very professional. She has her own stuff. She's a you know a hired gun, um, should I say, aka contractor. She does contract private, you know, freelance work. And so I'm kind of looking at it too, like, you know, yeah, probably doing it to secure, you know, a long-term future as well. And, you know, for individuals who've already done that, and when you have your own future and your own legacy to worry about, those type of things become concerning. So I just wanted to just drop that on you guys. It's just as far as one red flag that I've just been noticing. Once again, this is the Political Brown Kid. If you um, like the content, please hit the like and subscribe button so that we can get this content in front of a lot more people, in front of a wider audience. And also, too, if you have comments or feedback, maybe experiences that you've had, red flags that you've seen, please drop those in the comment section as well. Once again, this is the Political Brown Kid. Stay safe.